Hi, welcome back. Um, this makes six nights in a row that we have come together and and joined our hearts and our minds and our souls to to share these readings and reflections that that Archbishop Justin Welby has provided for us uh, in his Thy Kingdom Come program, and and it's been a it's been a great joy really to to be able to use this to focus my own prayers, and I hope that you have received the same joy uh, in 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 joining me um, as I have in 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 doing these recordings. Um, this evening, uh, we will begin with uh, a reading from, uh, uh, actually a prayer from uh, St. Augustine of Hippo. He writes, O Lord my God, light of the blind and strength of the weak, yea also light of those that see and the strength of those strong, Hearken unto my soul, and hear it crying out in the depths. O Lord, help us to turn and seek you, for you have not forsaken your creatures as we have forsaken you, our Creator. Let us turn and seek you, for we know you are here in our hearts. When we confess before you, when we cast ourselves upon you, and weep on your shoulder after all our rugged ways and you gently wipe away our tears and we weep the more for joy because you Lord who made us come to remake us and comfort us Hear, Lord, my prayers, and grant that I may most entirely love you, and do rescue me, O Lord, from every temptation, even to the end. Amen. What a beautiful prayer. To be truly one with God, regardless, regardless of what path we followed you in our lives, regardless of how far we stray from him, God is always there. He's always there to wipe away our tears. He's always there to share our tears of joy and console our tears of anguish. He is, he is with us always, even in times when we don't know that he is with us. He is always present. That's a wonderful thought, it's a wonderful idea that we're never truly alone because God is always with us. As we continue on this sixth day of readings from um, Archbishop Welby's uh, Thy Kingdom Come a Novena, um, this evening we, we read scripture from 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4 and we begin rather it your beauty should be that in your inner self the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight what a wonderful idea that is is that our inner beauty is more important to God than our outer beauty. The fact that we love one another, the fact that we love our neighbors as ourselves, the fact that we love Him with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, it makes us beautiful on the inside. And that's what means the most to God. Let's continue with His reflection. While, whilst we are implored for every year not to judge a book by its cover, it is something we have a hard time adhering to. But scripture is unequivocal 
Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. It's hardly surprising. Most of the people who saw Christ upon the cross merely recognized a criminal, a man suffering a shameful and humiliating death. All most people saw was a failed Messiah, unable to see the incredible truth that God triumphed over evil for our sakes. Things are not always what they seem. But appearance is important for us. There is so much in how we present ourselves, so many of us feel we have to pretend to fit in, to look a certain way in order to be accepted. Our perceptions of beauty are based on scarcity. They are temporal and limited. They are a cause of comparison and jealousy, insecurity and lack of insecurity, of la and lack of security. But this is not how God values us, and it's not how he wants us to value ourselves. By contrast, the qualities of what St. Peter calls the inner spirit are abundant and unlimited. They leave us feeling joyful rather than joy, rather joyous, inspired rather than insecure. Cultivating external beauty is an attempt to feel good about ourselves, but building internal beauty makes us feel good too. The woman Peter is the women Peter is addressing have little social status. They were often objectified, often seen as something to be owned rather than as individual humans seen and loved. Loved by God. And yet, Peter recognizes that they have rich inner lives. One is so subversive to the expectations of the time. A life lived not for others, but for Jesus. Peter affirms that neither man nor master are the supreme authority, but God who makes us in his own image. Christ Jesus, the one whom God has made, calls us to see people for who they really are. He calls us to really and truly hear and know people properly, to work with God's Spirit who encounters us and opens us up to our deepest places. All too often we tell people about Jesus without trying to hear their, fir their story first. All too often we judge before we know the truth. But today, today we reflect on the true beauty we will surely encounter this if we put our trust in God's abundant love. Rather than our own fear of not being enough, only God can enable this. Let us pray for our friends that God would connect with them by would connect with them through and by the Holy Spirit to their spirits. The only thing that brings people to God is the person of Jesus and the work of his spirit. He doesn't need anything else from us. He simply asks our love in return. I can't imagine how wonderful it would be if there was ever a time where we could pay a debt or... or... or fill a void simply by loving people. To say, to say to God, I love you with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, with all my strength, is to tell him the place that he has in your life, in your body, in your mind. And in return, we take up space in his life. 
in his existence. He is ours and, and we are his. It's a wonderful relationship. It's a relationship that doesn't take anything to maintain. Sometimes it's as easy as saying, Lord, I love you. Thank you for the gifts that you give me each and every day. And in return, he loves us back. Thank you again for joining me. I pray that you are all safe and well and content in your lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he comfort you in times of darkness and walk with you in times of joy. And as we part this evening, remember his love for us, each and every one of us. And be thankful. God bless. Take care. See you tomorrow.